guys ride with me because today I have a very special road trip review and if you've been watching the off-road channel you know I've been doing these trail guides where I have you come along with me and kind of show you local trails well today I'm going to take you someplace very special in a car that's very special we're going to go to Buffalo Bill Graves in this yeah check it out it's a Maybach and if you don't know what a Maybach is you may know it as a Mercedes-Benz GLS that's been fancied up quite a bit to make for well the ultimate SUV limousine so let's kind of talk about this car because it ain't cheap and uh, Maybach is kind of the luxury brand that sits on top of Mercedes for a long time to try to be their own thing but that really didn't work out so now Mercedes-Benz is calling their very top of the line cars Maybach and you know it's a Maybach because it's got in case counted it apparently 63 Maybach logos, at least that's how many counted, uh, in this vehicle. Now, being a Maybach, of course, makes it exclusive, uh, makes it expensive, and makes it very different. As, for instance, this paint. Now, that is an, I'm going to look at the cheat sheet here. I believe that is a uh, $18,000 option, uh, and it is the uh, two-tone Ocidian Black Kalahari Gold Paint. 18,500 and these special 23 inch Maybach multi spoke forged wheels. Can you guess? $5,500. Now, what makes this different from a run of the mill Mercedes Benz GLS? Well, I'll show you right now, and that of course is the fact that the regular GLS is a three row SUV, but in this case, Mercedes has taken out the third row and has included, let's call it first class airplane style passenger seats with all the comforts that you would expect of a vehicle that is not driven but chauffeured. Now in this video I will be driving it because well I like sitting in the back. Might as well sit in the back. I gotta show you this does have all of the luxury amenities including check this out. Come on over here Cole look at this. Regular cup holders and then these special ones that have these little arms on them you can see it right there what do you think those are for hint it's back here show you champagne flute glasses uh, that go in there which of course begs the question where do you put your champagne and that goes back there in the refrigerator but basically this is private jet comfort in a car now of course being the most important part of the car is where I'm sitting you also have this tablet uh, that you can then use uh, to control your seats, uh, your climate, um, your infotainment, uh, because really this is where the owner of the car usually would sit, uh, not in the driver's seat. I also like the fact that you have a very prominent phone holder right there, uh, and of course the fact that you can have foot rests, you can have headrest that you can control to whatever comfort you desire and check it out there's even a little pillow well, actually I can take it out there's even a little Maybach pillow in the back so that your back doesn't hurt you know you don't want your back to hurt now in the back here uh, this says Maybach GLS 600 and it does have some space to carry your bottles of cognac or expensive whiskey but the refrigerator does take up quite a bit of that space so if you want chilled adult beverages you are going to lose uh, some back seat room uh, this would certainly be an interesting vehicle to take uh, to let's call it a kid's soccer game i'm sure it would hold a lot of juice boxes <laughs> probably a, a boat ton of them not a lot of people but a lot of juice boxes now if you're wondering what's under the hood i'm going to pop the hood and i'll show you uh, this is of course a mild hybrid which just means it's basically gas powered so um, under this very expensive painted hood is a four liter twin turbo v8 uh, that produces 550 horsepower and uh, 538 pound foot of torque and then of course to lightweight it right here you've got this carbon fiber like front cowl i say carbon fiber like because it might actually be real fiber Fiber, carbon fiber but I don't know but you do have not a Mercedes badge ow, but a very hot Maybach badge uh, 0 to 60 oh I don't know does it matter I mean if you're sitting in the back seat and you're enjoying your champagne you're probably not going to be uh, wanting to uh, 
have it spilled all over you or your companion, but it's still relatively quick in the five to six second range. So most of these reviews are really about the destination, but with this vehicle, I think it's also gonna be about the journey because I'm really curious as to how something with so much technology rides. I mean, we have an air suspension, we have an off-road mode, we have 23s, which would tend to make me feel like it's gonna be a rather rough riding vehicle. Uh, but Cole, as always, let's jump in and head on over to Buffalo Bill's grave. And the cool thing about Buffalo Bill's grave is not the grave itself, but the fact that we have a little bit of a highway going there so we can see just how it drives on the flat parts. And then we have a really interesting twisty road and then we have an incredible view of Denver. And as you can see today, there is not a cloud in the sky. Uh, so you will get a panoramic view of Denver when we get to the top of the mountain where Buffalo Bill is buried. Oh, it is whisper quiet in here. I guess you don't want to hear the rumble of that mighty powerful four liter V8 because this is more of a car where you're being driven than you are driving it. Uh, but there are a lot of bells and whistles even up front here and you can see we've got an off-road mode We've got air suspension. Of course, we've got our navigation. We've got multiple cameras uh, Including a 360. I wonder if you can spin it. Yeah, you can spin it. You know, one of my uh, Tests of how good a car is in terms of its programming is when the color of that car on the screen actually matches the Kalahari paint that's on the vehicle on the outside. In this case, it doesn't. Uh, so boo-hoo, a little bit of attention to detail that I think for this level of car would be nice to have. All right, so to put it in gear, we have a traditional stock that's right there. Put it in drive. Apparently a very large gas tank because it's almost full and it says I've got 365 miles of range. Uh, so obviously, uh, this would be an incredible way to gobble up miles on America's interstates. It would also be an incredible way to gobble up fuel, I'm guessing, on America's interstates uh, because I'm sure it's not the cheapest car out there. So let's see what the price is. Oh, you know what? I promised you the price at the end of the video, so I'm going to tease you, but I'm going to give you this number, 16 MPG combined, which actually um, is not horrible. And the base price, by the way, I'll tell you that, $174,000 plus all the options. And you know, as we discussed, the paint is a mere 18000 So, how does the Mercedes drive? Well, let's get it down the road and uh, we'll find out. Now, I recently did one of these road trip reviews on a Rolls-Royce Spectre, uh, which is an all-electric Rolls-Royce, which actually this would compete with. And um, I'm really curious to see how something that's gasoline powered and not a Rolls Royce or a Bentley does when we get into those upper stratospheres of uh, price, performance, and opulence, or dare I say, opulent luxury. Very quiet, the steering is light, as I would expect, but I am surprised by the road noise. I don't know if you can hear it. Smooth pavement? bad pavement. Expansion joint, not bad. Air suspension soaked it up. Expansion joint, not bad. It does kind of waft along. Oh, that was a little harsher. But there is a little bit more tire noise, noise than I would expect. I think that's because we're rolling on these massive 23 inch tires, which Case pointed out to me are actually wider and bigger uh, than his Ram Cummins tires. Uh, yeah, we have come a long way uh, with tire size. All right, well, let's bring up the music and let's show you some of the scenery. It is fall in the Rockies and up there, you can see the flat irons of Boulder. The trees are starting to turn, but down here, not quite yet, but you can start to see a little bit of yellow in the Aspens. Oh, look, a GLE, ha, 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 peasant. Look at those tiny steamroller tires. Those must be barely 21s. Unlike our vehicle, which is uh, <laughs> much taller and of course, much more colorful and much more expensive, but you do feel like you are the king of the hill driving an expensive vehicle like this. Personally, I'd be terrified of uh, scratching or denting or 
even nicking the paint uh, because $18,000 will in Colorado actually get you a really nice used Jeep but once again that's very rarefied air uh, that I don't live in and it's nice to rent it Buffalo Bill was born in the 1800s and died in 1917, and he was first and foremost a soldier, but secondly, he spent his life killing a lot of buffalo, uh, just tremendous amounts of buffalo. And then he decided to take his life experience and create a Wild West show out of it, which he brought to not just North America, but also Europe, basically bringing a somewhat fictionalized version of what it used to be like to live in places like Colorado to the people on the East Coast to the people in England. He would have performances, he would have shooting competitions, he would have famous Wild West performers and became very famous and eventually passed away in 1917 and was buried because of his sister's wishes here on Lookout Mountain in Golden, Colorado. Now the story goes that the town of Cody, Wyoming, where he spent a lot of his time, he might have been born there, correct me if I'm wrong, put out a $10,000 bounty for anybody who could actually move his body from the gravesite here up to Wyoming. Whether that happened or not, well, that has probably been lost in the annals of time, but certainly the people here in Colorado believe that his grave is still located where we're going. Crazy as it may sound, this vehicle even has an off-road mode, so I can do this and then it takes me uh, to an off-road screen. So I guess what that allows you to do is jack up the suspension and then go destroy your 23s if you ever actually decided to go off-road. You can also adjust your suspension here with uh, recovery mode and individual wheel control. What that does, I don't know. What does the score do? What does the score do? You can start your next trip as soon as the vehicle is stationary. Start a new journey. Look at that. We've already started our journey. Too late. And of course, what else? That's kind of unique about this vehicle is that it has the Mercedes-Benz assistant. So, hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? Tell me a joke. Why don't oysters give to charity? Because they are shellfish. That wasn't good, huh? Let's try again. Hey, Mercedes, tell me a joke. What is round and extremely violent? A vicious circle. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Tell me a BMW joke. How do you make the number one disappear? Add the letter G to the front and it's gone. Ah, <laughs> I don't get that. Did you get that, Cole? How do you make the number one disappear? Add the letter what? Add the letter G to the front. Oh, like AMG? All right, explain that to me in the comments below because I'm completely baffled. All right, let's bring up the music and do a little more driving. So the uh, joke game is not strong with the Mercedes AI assistant, but what about its history? Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Tell me about Buffalo Bill. Here is what I found on Wikipedia. William Frederick Cody, known as Buffalo Bill, was an American soldier, bison hunter, and showman one of the most famous and well-known figures of the American Old West. Cody started his legend at the young age of 23. Would you like me to continue? No, I got it. Thank you. Can Shortly thereafter, he started performing in shows that displayed cancel. powerful themes and episodes from the frontier. Please, cancel. Thank you. <sighs> We're not there yet. I'm sure by the time I'm gray haired and barely able to drive, we'll actually have an AI assistant where voice commands work. Uh, but right now it just continues to be 
more frustrating than functional. This Maybach has five different drive modes and I'm so eager to try, okay, make that six drive modes. But Maybach has six drive modes and I'm so eager to try, not individual, not sport, you can see what's happening there. It's changing the suspension, the ASP, the motor, and of course, come on, the way the car drives. Um, Maybach mode gives you probably the most interesting, it's the most plush and the most luxurious, but the one that's really interesting is curve mode. What curve mode does is it allows the suspension to actually lean into turns like a motorcycle does. So instead of the car, when you're going around a turn, leaning to the outside of the turn, it can actually lean to the inside of the turn, making it much more interesting, I'm going to use that word, when you're inside. So the great thing about going up to the top of Lookout Mountain is it's very twisty and I'm really eager, really eager to try curve mode to see if I can actually carve the curves, which is what the idea of this is. I won't promise it to you because there's a lot of bicyclists going up at the same time and I've got a very big car and I don't want to endanger anybody, but if there's an open stretch of road with a couple of tight turns, I'm going to be fascinated to see if this thing actually does lean into curves. I have to correct something I said earlier, and that's because I just saw a Lexus LX up ahead of us. I said that it competes with like the Rolls Royce and the Bentley, but you know what? This probably does compete with the more upscale version, the autobiography version of the Range Rover, at least price-wise, and of course uh, the fancy Lexus LX with the very similar layout in the back with those business class or first class style seats. So I just wanted to get that out there before you corrected me in the comments. Now, this is Lookout Mountain straight ahead of us. And pretty soon we're going to be getting into the twisty bits. The one thing I would say about this car is that you do feel special driving it. And I'm a sucker for feeling special. As much as, you know, I was kind of being facetious about the paint costing $18,000, wheels costing $5,000. There is a reason for that, and that reason would be, and I know this is very shallow, is that there's not going to be another one in your neighborhood. Okay, maybe if you live, I don't know, in Hollywood somewhere, or Brentwood, there might be more of these roaming around, but not here in Colorado. You're not going to find another one. All right, so let's see if I'm in curve mode. Okay, my Bach, curve, okay, curve mode, and here we go. Let's see how this thing goes around the corner. That was dead flat. And I think they don't want people doing that because now the speed limit has gone down to 15 and a bump. And it just took soaked up that bump very easily. So there is a lot of benefit to having this very soft suspension. Look, flogging this thing around these curves is not something most people will do. And I completely understand why, but I do love the fact that Mercedes has pushed a technology where you can flog it around a curb if you wanted to. Because I have to say, as much as I love sitting in the back, I love sitting up here a heck of a lot more because driving is just fun. And even, you know, a very heavy car like this that is meant to be not driven but to be ridden in is still fun to drive, especially when you add 500 horsepower and a throaty exhaust. Our first cyclist coming down the hill it does make it feel like uh, you can have a little bit of fun in the twisties. But then again, I suspect that if you own one of these, you probably own a couple 911s and a few other sports cars. This is not your only ride and you won't be taking the kiddos to the soccer game. <laughs> Even though, man, showing up in the back of that to pick up uh, two kiddos or, uh, you know, a kiddo and a friend, that's a baller move in my book.
Mercedes, I am highly impressed by what you have done with such a massive, big ass vehicle that I can actually haul this bad boy around these corners and enjoy myself. Yeah, oh yeah. Solid brakes, good acceleration, always in the power band, and dead flat going around these curves. Now that is an interesting formula, to be sure. This Maybach is the ultimate Mercedes-Benz SUV for folks who love to be driven and not love to drive. And yet, if you do decide to get one of these, now you know that you can actually drive it and drive it all, in all kinds of conditions. It's all-wheel drive. I could see this, you know, as a really good ski car with a ski rack on the back. I could see it. Whoa, almost blew by it. That's the problem when I'm talking and not nobody's behind me. When I'm talking and not looking where I'm going. We're almost here. So there it is, Buffalo Bills Museum and Grave and Souvenir Shop, of course. What would a grave be without a souvenir shop? And uh, we'll have a wonderful view of the front range of Colorado as soon as we crest this hill. And hopefully we can park and I can show you where uh, the grave is. Look, there's even a tour bus up here. Holy cannoli. Who would have thought that it's gotten this popular? All right, as promised, look out mountain with uh, one of the best views in all of the front range of Colorado. If you don't, if you ignore, can we uh, AI out those uh, towers, Cole? But straight ahead of us, down there, of course, is Golden, Colorado, once the capital of this wonderful state, with the Coors factory front and center, and then un the university, the School of Mines, you can kind of tell those red roofed buildings. Uh, if you're an engineer, that's a really great engineering school. And then way off in the distance over there, you can make out Denver. And then way, way off in the distance, that would be Kansas. But I promised you the grave, so let's check that out. Well, there you have it, guys. William Frederick Cody. AK Buffalo Bill, 19, 1846 to 1917. Thank you for joining me for another road trip review. Let me know if you like this format because I certainly like making them, but only if you like watching them. Remember, go to altfl.com for more news, views, and real world reviews. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's two very expensive cars. That's very unusual for us. Next time we'll return to regularly scheduled non 200 and 17,000? Is that how much that car cost called? Do you remember? He doesn't remember anymore. Oh, and I forgot the Monroni. All right, we'll be right back. We gotta get to the car and I gotta get, I promised you the uh, MSRP and now I've forgotten it. All right, let's go back. Well, now that I've got the Monroni, I can tell you how much it costs. Starts at 174,000 and then as tested, $203,000 with a mere 1150 destination. So I'm gonna call that a bargain. All right. See you guys next time. Ciao.